Good morning or afternoon and welcome back. If you happen to have tuned in as a result of having watched our previous two videos, you know that we are here this time around to talk a little about, about Footprints version 12, searching and reporting. The other two videos discuss Footprints as a platform and the ability to change Footprints look and feel so that you can have your customers or your technicians interact with it in the way that you need to. But the reason that you set all of that stuff up, the reason that you make footprints look and feel the way you need is so that, A, you can process the kinds of requests you need to, right, whether they are incident requests or change requests or any other kind of process you have, but B, so that in the end you can search for and find all of the data about how those processing requests work, right? How well did we do? Or do we have tickets that are already delayed? Or do are we still processing our stuff in a timely fashion? Are there tickets being held up by someone? Or are we on time in our delivery for everything? How did we do last month? What was the volume of tickets that we took? How many might still be open? Or maybe just some finding something simple, you know, like, hey, show me all the tickets that were involved with email, right, in which a customer or someone mentioned email. So let's talk a little bit about searching and reporting inside of this segment of our BMC Footprints of version 12 discussion. Searching and reporting is really foundational to getting your information back, right? And any tool that doesn't provide you access to search or that provides you limited access to search means that you have limited access to find your stuff. And there's nothing more frustrating than knowing that you put your stuff into a tool, only you can't really get it back out, right, because it doesn't like your report. Footprints is not that way. I can search for any field that I've created. And as we talked about in a previous segment, creating fields is very easy, creating your own data and your own forms and workflows, because it's all done through a point-and-click interface. But once I capture that information, Footprints allows me to do simple searching as a first point, right? So if I simply want to find all tickets that have to do with email, and I'm going to type the word email in here. You get to watch me do that. And I would like to find all of those in our corporate services incidents area. So show me all the incidents that were opened that have the word email in them. If I do that, Footprints is going to return a list of all of those searches, right? All of that information. You can see all the tickets and all of their status. Anything that mentions the word email is going to have a result in this search that's going to come back for me. And really, all of the information across these tabs, whether it's our legal matters or our L1 tickets, are all searches because they're simply matching criteria and saying, hey, show me all the level one tickets that might exist, or show me all of our pending corporate communications and where they're sitting in terms of their status, right? Or show me all the tickets that are involved in email. So simple searching is where you can start with Footprints, but you don't have to stop there. Footprints allows you to do much deeper searches for literally any information that you wish to capture, not just a simple keyword, but any information anywhere. And Footprints does this through what's called an advanced search. Advanced searching in Footprints, I'm going to roll my dashboard out of the way, allows you to create a search that has an actual name. Right? So you can name your search what you want and therefore the search name usually has to do with the kinds of tickets that you're looking for. So I'm going to say tickets over five days old that are not closed. There, that's a long name. You can also describe this and have some notes about it because they realize that you might sleep between creating a search and using it the next time. And it's helpful to have a reminder of why you created it and what you were intending to find. This search is private, but I'm going to make it available for other folks. This means that if someone has permissions in Footprints to see shared searches, they'd be able to see mine. And I can decide where to search. Every object in Footprints, whether it's our service portfolios, meaning our service catalog, our CMDB, our incident tracking, our project tracking, any tracking that we do, can all be managed and searched for right here. And you can see all of those objects are available here for me to search, including my incident records. Now I can search across multiple record types if I want to by adding them in and Footprints will simply give me the ability to search for fields across all of them if I want. So that means I can have a single pane of glass through which I can look at all of the capabilities across my organization and see how well we're doing on delivery for all of those, right? In this case, we'll keep it simple. We'll just look for our incident records and we'll tell Footprints exactly what we would like to search for. We said that we wanted to find things that were more than five days old. So I'm going to say age greater than or equal to five days, no hours and no minutes. And we also said it's important if they were not closed, 
So tickets that aren't yet closed that are five days or greater old are probably important. So we're going to look for our status and say, hey, not equal to closed in this case. And that'll allow us to create a simple search for those two criteria. We can add more criteria, anding or oring them as we go to ensure that we capture all the right data. In the end, we're going to want to know which fields to display. So I can display the status and the title, maybe the record number, the priority. And if I wish to change the order of any of this, I can just drag that right up to the spot I want. Maybe I want that to be above status, so I can drag it up there too. Put title in the place that I would like to. You can see Footprints lends itself to ease of use because everything about the tool is point and click and drag and drop. Now we'll decide where to publish it. If I say to publish this as a part of service analytics, that means Footprints can use this as a part of any report. It becomes a query for a report. And if I choose to publish it as a mobile, that means that Footprints will allow me to view this on a mobile device, even a mobile device that doesn't pinch zoom very friendly. So you can make it available wherever you would like to make it available, including the ability to use it, as I said, as a query for a report later. When we preview the results, you can see the list of tickets and their ticket numbers that match that criteria. You can see that we can choose to add additional information here if we would like. So I can add additional columns to my form if that's what I want to do. All of that ability exists right inside of the tool so that I can have my search look the way I want. And when I'm ready, I can save my search so that I can use it later. Now you can, of course, search for anything that you want to, any fields of your own, any fields that are a part of the product, any values that you've added or that were a part of the product. So there are no limitations on what you can find. Any data you can capture, you can find inside of Footprints. Now, if we said, hey, I wanted to use this, remember we said publishing options, I want to use this as an advanced search for service analytics. Service analytics is really just another way of saying reporting, right? And in Footprints, reporting, service analytics, allows you to see how well you're doing at delivering your services. Since everything you do as an organization is a service, it only makes sense that you should analyze and see how well you're doing at delivering them. So we can create reports of just about any type you can think of. Basic ticket management reports, which are kind of the out-of-box or metrics reports, if you will. These allow you to manage the common things for tickets, like how long are we taking to turn tickets around? Or what are the average age of our tickets? Or show me the life cycle to statistics so I can see how many were opened, how many were closed, how many were completed within a particular time period. Or show me tickets that are in open versus closed status or in progress versus complete. I can even create a watch list for tickets so that if I've done a change over the weekend, for example, and I would like to see on Monday whether people are still calling in about that broken thing, I can see whether the change worked by creating a watch list and saying, hey, show me all the Citrix tickets for Monday because we just did a Citrix change that should shut, stop people from calling into the service desk. So you can create literally any kind of metrics report you want, but also note you can create any kind of custom report or cross-item reports. You can look across multiple workspaces, time tracking. You can even create dashboards. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But you can create dashboards as well. Any report that you build in Footprints is going to show up here in my list of reports. You can see I've built a couple of age reports, a couple activity reports. If I drill in a little deeper, you can see my average age reports are here, the two of them I built. You can see my activity reports are here. You can see I built some custom reports as well. No matter what report type you've built, right, whether you're building it from scratch or whether you're creating it or editing an existing report, you're going to be taken to the exact same report builder. Speaking of that report builder, our dashboard builder allows us to create dashboards out of any report that we've constructed that we said, hey, we would like to make this report a part of a dashboard down the road. So this allows you to have dashboards that are flexible for your needs because now your dashboards can be created as a mashup of any combination of reports that you would like. Any report that's added to the dashboard is going to be now available to view on that dashboard and you can then mix and match any reports that you've created to make them a part of a dashboard. In fact, when we come here, you can see that if I choose View Report in Dashboard, this report becomes available in a dashboard just like the box says. This is the My Report report that I pulled up earlier. It's looking at our incident records and it's looking at all tickets that are active, anything that's not yet closed. 
I've made this report available in dashboards and I've also made it available in Service Core. What that really means is, on my home screen, if I wish to, I can see the information about that report right here. So I can display information about reports as a dashboard element. I can display them as a home screen element too, if I wish to. Any report that I want to make a modification to, you see I, all the field values that are in that particular form are available here. So that means I can decide which fields I wish to make a part of the columns as the output of this report. And you can see that all of the information from that report is available for me here. Now I can choose to export this information as an Excel file or as a PDF document. I'll go ahead and start exporting that as a PDF and come back here and continue talking with you. I can export it as a true Excel document if I wish to manipulate the data in Excel. And many tools require that you do that, right? A lot of tools require that you have to export to Excel in order to make any report happen. Footprints does not require you to export that data. You can do so if you wish, but you can create formulas in Footprints or change layouts or sort your data, filter it, group it, aggregate the data. You can add your own charts to the data, create cross tabs or paginated reports from here. So Footprints really gives you the full-on analytics capability that you would expect from a tool like Excel or some other analytic solution, except it's all built into the tool and is all done through a point-and-click interface, so you never have to write code. Remember, no code inside of Footprints. So adding formulas or adding filters or grouping by any particular field that I wish to group by, all available to me as choices. And of course, folks usually like to create their reports with charts. And Footprints certainly provides you with an ability to create bar charts or pie charts, curve charts, scatter plot, heat map, even gauge charts, which is something that in the current versions of Excel, you can't really create as out-of-box functionality. You have to kind of kludge it together with a couple different uh, charts that are transparent and lay them over the top of each other. So we can do functions with charts that you can't even perform inside of Excel. And if you wanted to create a pie chart, Right? You can create one with specific functions in it, looking for label columns, data columns, data aggregation columns, et cetera. But I've already done that and created a pie chart down here. It shows us the information about this particular set of searches that I put together, shows me all that data. So this can also, of course, be exported as a PDF if I wish. And you can see the export of our other PDF here. This is the PDF export of our list. So that means all the details of all of our tickets are here. I can choose to copy this, I can export it, paste it, zoom in, print it, save it, whatever I would like to do with it. And that also means, of course, that if I've chosen to set up a report in Footprints and I wanted to automatically run that report, I can do that too. We'll talk a little bit about how that can be done. Footprints created a PDF of my chart, so this is available for me to also send, save, print, whatever I would like to do. And when I'm back on my reporting screen, you can see at the top that I have the ability to automatically run this report too. That means this report would be automatically delivered to the correct audience at the correct time. So if I wanted to send it to my manager every Monday at five o'clock in the morning so that they would have that report waiting in their inbox, that means I don't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning to do that report. It's already ready and Footprints has sent it off to the correct audience. And you can schedule as many of those reports as you'd like. So in total, what Footprints really is, is a total web-based solution that can manage both your ITSM product processes as well as other processes that you may have, right? Any kind of process that has a beginning, middle, and end, really, or someone is asking for something to be fulfilled. Footprints does this through a web interface that is totally codeless, so you never have to add a stitch of code. You have the ability to manipulate your own form data modifying footprints as you need so that you can capture the information necessary for your processes. And as we talked about in our administrative segment, you can see that that's very easy to do through a point and click interface. And of course, in the end, we want to be able to capture all of that data and be able to report it out, even sending it to the right folks at the right time so that it can be automatically run and distributed when needed. So footprints is really a total ITSM or other workflow solution that you could incorporate into your business to help make it better. If you'd like more information about this, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Flycast. Thanks very much for tuning in and listening. Have a great rest of your day.